30 years ago, a phenomenon called summoning syndrome started happening all over the world. Thousands of men and women were summoned to other worlds through a passage called the Other World Gates. And once they finish their mission, they can return to Earth. One of these returning heroes is the rogue hero, Akatsuki. After defeating the demon Lord Garius in the world of Elacerd, Akatsuki returns to his home world, bagging the demon lord's daughter, Mew with him, and adopting her as his foster sister. The next day, Akatsuki and Mew enroll in Babel, a prep school for returning humans, who were previously heroes from other worlds. The heroes return to Earth with the abilities they acquired and trained in their summoning world. Therefore, most of them come back with super strength, magic power, and in Akatsuki's case, to use internal energy. Babel's job is to ensure those heroes don't get a superiority complex on Earth and start to destroy everything they see around them. Everyone in this school is an Ice Sky protagonist, except they're not the main character. After finishing their enrollment process, the two head out to train and show off their abilities as part of the entrance exams. As the exams start, Mew reveals her powers as a powerful magic caster, blasting the trainer next to a wall with her water cannon. Next is Akatsuki, but the student council president, Hakami Kaoya, interferes and asks him to be his next opponent. Akatsuki notices that Kaoya is strong and happily accepts the challenge. Kaoya uses a surprise ice attack on Mew, but Akatsuki's quick reflexes manage to save her. Kaoya then challenges him to break the ice pillar and Akatsuki quickly shows off his prowess, which impresses the student council president, congratulating him on passing the entrance exams of Babel. The next day, the siblings officially join Babel and gain the attention of everyone else in the school. After entering the class and taking a seat, one of the bullies, Onizuka, a class A dropout, tries to get Akatsuki off his seat, but Akatsuki sends him flying outside the room, threatening him that he also loves to bully bullies and crush their egos because they think they're better than everyone. The next day, Babel is conducting their regular training day. Each student was given a bracelet that materializes the weapon that best fits them. However, Akatsuki is having trouble summoning his own weapon. His teacher claims it's just as easy as using magic, but Akatsuki reveals he was never able to use magic. The teacher then divides the classes into two, group one will go to another stadium, and group two will stay and pair up to fight each other. Akatsuki tries to join the girls in their group, but he gets rejected and he's forced to stay in group two. The training starts for group one. They're going to be battling the Kaketras, a bird-like creature used as a training dummy created by a program to be an easy opponent, as most of the dangerous skills are turned off. In Group 2, Akatsuki sees Onizuka bullying Tanaka once again and decides to beat him up. Onizuka refuses, but Akatsuki reveals he cannot summon a weapon with his bracelet, therefore, he will be using a normal sword instead. Onizuka initiates the battle by quickly incinerating Akatsuki, revealing he was preparing the spell to sneak attack before the battle began, but it has very little effect on Akatsuki as he comes out unscathed. Freaked out, Onizuka throws his chakrams at Akatsuki, which he easily deflects. Akatsuki responds in kind by quickly charging toward Onizuka, which makes the bully pass out while being traumatized for life. Akatsuki then picks up Onizuka's bracelet to try and summon his weapon, but only a silhouette appears before breaking down. Meanwhile, in Group 1, the Kaketra starts going rampage, turning students into stone. The teacher freaks out, mentioning that he cannot access the system, revealing that someone hacked it and maxed out the bird, while also unlocking its dangerous skills. Izumi, Kizua and Mew try their best to deal with the creature, but the two girls turn into stone while protecting Mew from its feathers. Mew tries her best to hold the bird from crushing her stone classmates, but the bird attacks her. Fortunately, Akatsuki arrives just in time to punch the bird away and save her. He then then summons a giant sword, materializing it from all of the bracelets he stole from students to summon his weapon. The Kaketras recovers and sends a barrage of stones, turning feathers, which Akatsuki swipes off clean. He hits the bird several times and starts infusing his weapon with his own energy. He then thrusts his great sword onto the creature and after a few seconds, 
the creature explodes, saving the life of the students. After the fight, he heads to the control room and confronts Tanaka, revealing that he knows that he's the one responsible for setting the Kaketra's limiters off. He further explains that he has always been bullied and picked on by Anazuka, despite being stronger than his bully. Tanaka couldn't believe someone caught up to his plan and immediately springs into action to attack Akatsuki. In response, Akatsuki summons his great sword. However, Tanaka outmatches him as he receives a series of sonic attacks, which knocks him out being a magical punching bag. However, Akatsuki was only pretending to be knocked out and quickly summons his great sword to attack the approaching Tanaka. Akatsuki gets up and explains to Tanaka how he survives using his linked energy manipulation, causing him to take no damage whatsoever from the attack. Seeing how Akatsuki's literal plot armor, Tanaka turns into a school bomber and threatens to blow Babel into pieces, because he claims that Babel is only training every student to be used as an army to fight wars. However, Kaoya arrives and imprisons Tanaka inside his ice pillar. Akatsuki leaves and reunites with his sister, who was exhausted from the incident earlier. He uses his linked energy manipulation once again to accelerate her healing capabilities, which also allows her to release the pent stress that she's holding up since her father died. Akatsuki tells Miu that sometimes, it's okay to cry, even if the shoulder she's leaning on is coming from someone who killed her father. The school ranked matches begin a few days later. It's an evaluation method that decides the student's class for the next school year according to their performance. They must arrange themselves in groups of four students and get into a battle royale. Akatsuki joins the girls to participate in the ranked battles, but there's a problem, he's the big shot in school. Therefore, every group decides to target them, but thanks to Akatsuki's insane powers, it was a walk in the park. That night, the student council arrives and challenges Akatsuki. Akatsuki takes them on and outclasses them, but something bad happens. Taidu reveals that Babel's protective barrier has been deactivated. A few seconds later and they hear a huge explosion coming from Mew's location. Akatsuki quickly rushes toward the location and finds Izumi and Kizua are injured. Kizua informs Akatsuki that a mysterious man suddenly appeared and attacked them. The man overpowered them both, forcing Mew to run and lure the man away from them. Upon hearing this, Akatsuki orders the student council to save both Mew's friends and assist the injured students after the protective barrier's deactivation. He starts looking for Mew and the man while sprinting around, until he finally finds out that the mysterious man is a Destinian paladin sent to their world to capture Mew. The paladin introduces himself as Phil Burnett, an earthling who was summoned to a Alizard and now calls it his new home. Akatsuki summons his great sword and pushes Phil away. As the two clash his swords, Phil tries to question Akatsuki's morality by saving Mew, an heir to the demon lord and a natural enemy of humanity, while calling himself a hero. However, Akatsuki retorts that what Phil's saying is nonsense because it's against his personal values to let a woman cry. With his intentions heard, Phil attacks Akatsuki with magical a barrage of projectiles, but Akatsuki quickly deflects the attack and jumps on Phil with his great sword. With the help of his linked energy manipulation, Akatsuki gains the upper hand and overpowers Phil. He then uses his energy to summon a massive energy ball, to ping Phil against the wall. However, Phil recovers quickly and takes Mew as his hostage. Akatsuki asks him why he's so hell-bent on killing Mew, and Phil reveals his high level of stupidity, mentioning that in order to surpass Akatsuki as Alizard's previous hero, he needs to kill Mew as the new demon lord. Upon hearing Phil's motivation, Akatsuki breaks his fragile ego, and discounts his motivation as jealousy instead. Phil tries to kill Akatsuki, but he channeled all of his energy to his neck, making it harder than steel. He then turns Phil into a royal punching bag before giving a super slam back blow that will correct his posture for ages. He then runs after Mew, who ran away due to her conflicting feelings. She's the demon lord's daughter who will always be hunted by Alizard. He manages to find her, but she jumps off a cliff. Akatsuki jumps down and manages to take her to the shore, explaining her father tried everything to make sure she was safe. 
He wanted to create a world where she could rest and be happy, to the point of trusting his daughter to his killer, thinking that he had enough strength to keep her safe and happy. Mia realizes this and takes on Akatsuki's hand to start something new on Earth. However, Akatsuki collapses from the poison wound he received while fighting Phil. Fortunately, Mew's immediate response saves him. Phil appears once again and transforms into a dragon. He merged with the Dragon of War, Sahak, a higher life form immune to all magical-based attacks, to become Blue-Eyes White Dragon. However, the poison is still circulating on Akatsuki's body, making him unable to fight against the dragon, so Mew decides to fight the dragon and stall time until he manages to remove all poison from his body. He spends his time circulating his energy to increase his body healing abilities and metabolism, getting rid of the poison in his body as fast as he can. Meanwhile, Mew, Izumi and Kizua are trying their best to hold the dragon, even the student council is trying to help, but they're no match. Mew gets restrained, and she starts babbling about how Phil will never become the hero, because the hero can only be acknowledged by the demon lord, therefore, as the daughter of the former lord, she only recognizes Akatsuki as the real hero. Phil starts to perform the return ritual to return with Mew to Alizard, but Akatsuki appear with his sleep in her motorbike, saving Mew. He then summons his great sword and starts his attack, but the sword starts getting rusty due to the dragon's poisonous body. He decides to take the best approach by punching the dragon's body. In response, the dragon tail sweeps him onto a wall, before unleashing a series of magical projectiles, hitting Akatsuki's body. The dragon is about to devour him but he manages to slam the dragon with his great sword. The dragon gets pushed down and starts to feel weaker. Akatsuki reveals he wasn't just randomly punching the dragon, he was hitting the dragon with his energy, forcing it into the dragon's body and changing the way the energy circulates inside it. As a last-ditch effort to obliterate him, the dragon decides to do a suicide magic bomb, but thanks to Akatsuki's quick wits, he manages to save everyone by blocking the attack with his sword, destroying one of his bracelets in the process. However, the dragon is still alive and Akatsuki steps forward to fight regardless of not having a weapon. Mew asks him why is he sacrificing himself. He replies she will never be able to fully trust him if she doesn't believe him in the most critical moments. She then gives him her bracelet, and he jumps to fight the dragon again, who is preparing to attack with a magical beam. Akatsuki splits it in two with his sword, creating an explosion that making him unconscious while in midair. The dragon prepares a stronger magic beam to finish him off, but Mew shouts that she's prepared to live forever with him, waking him up. He then summons his great sword again and rushes toward the magic beam, splitting it and the dragon in half. With the crisis averted, the school is safe thanks to Akatsuki's efforts. That's all for today. Don't forget to like and to subscribe for more anime recap videos like this. Thanks for watching.